Hey, today on Paul's Wanderings, we're going to talk about the risks inherent with hiking in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Many people are intimidated by hiking the White Mountains for three big reasons. Uh, first one is the weather. In the higher summits uh, in the White Mountains, say the Presidential Range or the Franconia Ridge, winds can get to the calm where there's no wind all the way up to gale force slash hurricane force winds with that comes the possibility of dropping temperatures um this it does snow every month of the year on mount washington and and the higher summits of the presidential range so many people are intimidated by the possibility of getting stuck above tree line when the inclement weather hits another thing that intimidates people that uh, from hiking in the white mountains are the strenuousness of our of our trails um i've seen many videos say of the colorado trail or some sections of the appalachian trail where it looks like they're just cow paths right that you just got dirt paths straight maybe you get some elevation um, but there are no rocks no roots so it's a nice sweet easy walk in the woods in new hampshire we don't believe in that we have we leave all of the rocks there and i swear we grow more rocks um the reason for that is our our trails were built back in the 1800s when hiking wasn't a sport hiking was more for it wasn't even really hiking they were they were um bridle paths so you took a horse out for a ride something like that so these trails go straight up you can gain a thousand feet of elevation in one mile um and they're rock strewn uh you could go you could go two miles and never hit a spot where you don't have rocks uh, a couple reasons for that the big one is erosion control so new hampshire has a history we don't we don't really like or we don't use switchbacks much <clears throat> because our mountains are so short compared to say the rockies or the sierra um if we were to have switchbacks it would it would turn a four or five mile hike or trail into double that so our trails just go straight uphill and that for many people is very intimidating um, the way i that the way that i handle these is i just kind of keep my head down and just plow on i know that if i lift my head and i look up i'm just going to get discouraged so that's my that's my um strategy for hiking a lot of our our a lot of our um trails the one trail that really drives me up the wall is the liberty springs trail uh from the base of franconia notch up to obviously mount liberty just straight up and rock strewn uh gets you huffing and puffing um the other reason or another reason that people get intimidated with hiking in the white mountains is the remoteness of many of our summits many of our trails are four to five length four to five miles in length just to the summit say if you wanted to get to the summit of mount garfield just to the summit on mount garfield trail is five miles if you wanted to say get out to the bond so mount bond west bond bond cliff i think that one is like nine miles in one direction so you need to be able to be well conditioned for the length of that hike and again the strenuousness um and for many people they just don't have that ability so the three reasons again that most people are intimidated by hiking in the white mountains of new hampshire the weather and change on a dime the strenuousness of our hikes it goes straight uphill they're rock strewn and no switchbacks and the last one is the remoteness of our trails when you're out there you're out there and a lot of these trails are not well traveled so you want to make sure that you're that you're comfortable with that and and many people aren't 
So I know I've uh, put maybe the White Mountains of New Hampshire, maybe not in the best of light, but I can tell you they are my favorite place in the world to hike. Um, like I said, I grew up with them in, in my backyard, so they're, they're very familiar to me. What you want to remember, if you are thinking about hiking in the White Mountains, you got to do your research. Look at the weather, not just a couple days before your hike, the day of your hike and if, if you can if you're bringing if you've got like um uh, an app on your phone for weather you we want to keep checking that the mount washington observatory is a great resource and many people will use that it's an observatory at the top of mount washington and it gives um weather reports and forecasts for the higher summits of course you want to make sure that you're well conditioned for these hikes there's nothing worse than getting to the top of a, a great view and now you've got to hike back down and your knees are killing you. So you want to make sure that you're well conditioned and and have the 10 essentials. Um, you know, yes, they're for safety, but they're also for comfort. So that's definitely what you want to do. Um, but again, hiking in the White Mountains, as long as you're prepared for it, is a great experience. So remember to do your due diligence, but get out there and have some fun. So thanks for coming along with me on this journey um, of talking about the dangers of hiking in the White Mountains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up. And hey, if you really wanted to support me in my videos and my endeavor to bring you videos like this, click on the link below to learn about how you can become a member of Paul's Wanderings. Or if you wanted to buy some merch, like my sweatshirt or a t-shirt, I'll leave a link to that um, to my merch store in the description as well. If you like this video, I know you're going to like the one that'll pop up right here. So until I see you in my next adventure or my next video, this is Paul signing off.